Я тебя за шибу будешь выебываться. Ребята, как у вас там? Вот So what what is this exercise? So at the moment we're practicing a uh, off direction of a CQB room clearance, building clearance. Uh, the friendlies are taking casualties, so the Ukrainians have taken casualties within the building, as have the Russians that were in the building to begin with. So uh, what the second group is doing is coming in, clearing the building. Uh, as you see now evacuating the friendly casualties. Priority the friendly casualties will be evacuated first, stabilized in here, and then evacuated into a CCP or the yellow zone outside. Uh, now they're also treating the Russian casualties, so although they're enemy, once they're injured, if they surrender, they give up arms, they will be given uh, treatment. Obviously a process of doing that safely for yourself and for the casualty as well is removing the weapons, searching the prisoner um, and then providing treatment and extracting afterwards as well. Obviously the priority is friendly casualties but we are also uh, evacuating the enemy casualties as well. When he's shooting you can move. То есть э, самое лучшее, да, здесь, если вы не можете, блядь, просто это пизда. Патрон. Контакт! So, mate, thanks for inviting me down to the Good range you, to see the training you guys are conducting uh, and the charity work, the voluntary work you and your boys are doing. Um, I'm really interested in it, you know, knowing these guys are all ex-military and some of them, you know, a lot of mutual friends and guys have been like, oh, I've been following you for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, it's really intriguing, but I just want to sort of know about where this started and where it's going and what you're doing day to day. Uh, yeah, so I've been here about f just under four years now. Um, I spent three years in the Ukrainian Marines, um, former British military as well. Uh, and I've worked as a medical volunteer uh, in a few other conflict zones as well, such as Syria, Colombia, Burma. Um, yeah, basically, uh, through my knowledge of the Ukrainian military, um, I decided that at the beginning of the war, um, I was, I live in Butcher, so I was trapped in Butcher for the first two and a half weeks of the war. So I got to see sort of the the initial stages of the war very up close, um, up to the point where the Russians actually captured Butcher. Um, and I had to evacuate through them, through their block posts, etc. Uh, on one of the green corridors, so I saw the, the sort of the beginnings of things like the territorial defense units um, and the military units that were obviously under equipped, under trained, um, done, a, done a fantastic job obviously defending their home, but um, that they needed more. Uh, obviously in the, the months up and coming to the war, the foreign uh, training missions such as the American, uh, British Operation Orbital and the Canadian partnerships with the Ukrainian military finished in Ukraine. So there was no longer any uh, what you call NATO style, Western style training, um, which effectively just means, you know, uh, higher level training going on in Ukraine. Um, so once I got out of Butcher, I was, I was, uh, began training and also working with a unit because I was still in the Ukrainian military at the time. Um, and then over time, this developed into something bigger. So initially it was, uh, had no name, uh, didn't really have any, uh, uh, any big direction other than, you know, we're gonna train these guys. Um, we're gonna work with them, we're gonna go to where they are, and we're gonna train them. Um, and obviously as the as the war develops and the, the areas around Kiev became unoccupied and uh, the war was pushed more to the east and the south, um, 
we just sort of grew and grew and expanded. Um, and obviously, as you grow with, with any organization, uh, business, charity, whatever, um, you obviously have to make some changes. So, so I, I made a, as, as we grew, and as we started to take on hundreds of soldiers at once and I had more instructors coming in, um, I decided to change it into more of a, uh, an organization. So, so we came up with Trident Defense Initiative. <clears throat> so Trident Defense Initiative is there to help the Ukrainians um, and other people too, but predominantly Ukrainians defend their country. Okay, this is not really an offensive organization. We're not training people to go out and, and, and kill Russians and, and you know, uh, defeat orcs. We're, we're training people to be able to defend their country, whether that be the Russian threat, separatist threat, um, or any other external threat. So what we offer at Trident Defense is, is a mixture of skills, a large variety of skills uh, from predominantly NATO instructors, um, foreign instructors, but we do also have Ukrainian instructors uh, who are working for free as volunteers in official direct partnership with those military units. So uh, we're just over month six of the war now, um, and we've trained uh, around uh, over 2,000 soldiers um, from different units. So, it's, no, it's artillery shelling, but it's really far away. It's over that way. It's uh, That's incoming, but it's, it's miles away. Um, so yeah, so we have trained units from the Territorial Defence, we've trained units from the ZSL, the Armed Forces of Ukraine, the, the regular army, and then we've also trained units from the National Guard and the police. Um, we have trained civilians as well, predominantly in medical work. We don't train uh, non-official units or civilians in any combat stuff. Um, and we focus, focus mainly uh, on working in official partnership with contract soldiers of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. As I said, we do all this for free. Um, so we've, we're basically working as volunteers. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of support for Ukraine. So a lot of guys are coming over, that are, you know, no longer serving in the military. Um, and then we also have drone instructors and medical instructors. So um, a, a rough overview of what we do: we offer uh, like longer term courses or 15, 21 day courses, which cover a variety of skills. We also offer specialist courses, such as our team medic course, um, which is a 10 day course and just trains people to be. A little bit higher than teacher will see intravenous uh, more in depth into airways narcotics that sort of thing um, we offer drone programs where we train offensive and defensive drone maneuvers um, and then we also offer other specialist military subjects depending on the unit what they have and what they need um, one of the big things that I started with this as well because of the lack of equipment and the amount of equipment coming into Ukraine obviously some of it can get misallocated um, through things like corruption or just general misallocation. So one of the missions at the beginning of Trident Defence was to train and equip. So we provide all our students with military uniforms, military grade uniforms, so American or British military uniforms, and we provide them with basic medical kits, so IFAX essentially, um, as a minimum standard. We have and we do provide high level things, like thermals, drones, that sort of thing. But obviously when you have no funding, that depends on the support that we get. So. Uh, I just saw a big gap in between, we're, we're the largest training organization in Ukraine at the moment and there's a, there's a big gap in between, hey, we're going to bring in 50 drones, we're going to buy 50 drones, or we're going to buy 50 thermal sites and give it to the soldiers. Great, okay, but most of those soldiers aren't trained how to use those things. So what I try and do is say, hey, give it to Trident Defense, we will train units, and then on completion of their training, if they qualify, then they will receive drone, thermal, etc, etc. So that way they're not just having the equipment, they're having the training and the equipment. And I guess how can people support yourself, find you? So uh, at the moment um, we are sort of trying to develop into more website things and that. Um, it, it is something that's needed, you know, most of my support has come off things like Instagram and stuff like that. Um, we are seeking to be more of a, a governmental organization, um, working directly with the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Um, but at the moment, like I said, we do work for free. Um, our instructors are on unpaid positions. Um, some of our instructors have been here for upwards of five to six months since the beginning. Um, and then we do have instructors rotating in and out. So uh, I'm on Instagram, uh, Rugi, um, and then obviously we have the Trident Defense in Initiative Instagram. Um, we're quite, we're quite a good uh, presence on Reddit at the moment. Um, and then also we're looking at setting up a website, which will be tridentdefenseinitiative.org. Awesome. No, thanks, man. Appreciate it. No, appreciate it, mate. Cheers. Uh